studio again <laughs> back in the studio yeah yeah serious <laughs> thing back in the studio i want to say welcome to one and all another ear in the ball head and the dread podcast right we are happy to be back in the studio i know you've been say. streaming but it's a bit better vibe in person um fire what we reason about today today we are reason about the act of serving people and people pleasing is two different things and I really feel like that differentiation, this is a conversation where I think apply to every individual out there because there's a lot of different individuals who falls upon the, fall upon the extreme end of the spectrum. True, true, and true, it, I feel true. like it casts such an imbalance towards them life and the dwellings within them life that we need to talk about it. Well, let's talk about first the people pleasing vibe fire, right? Um, people pleasing is a terrible practice. Many people do it. I think many people do without knowing that they're doing it. Mm -hmm. um, there are many vampires and wolves out here that prey off of people who, who have that spirit of people pleasing. Obviously, um, the source of it is a self worth issue, an insecurity issue. But what happens now is that you you tend to do things that don't benefit you at all, right? And not saying this. Was, I'm gonna tie this in later with the service, but it doesn't benefit you at all. And it's the sole purpose is to be in good grace with another person, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, I think some people are, I think I've had a, maybe at certain points in my life, especially when I was younger, I've, I was stricken with the spirit of people pleasing, you know? And uh, what you find is that um, a lot of times, unfortunately, you put the, the uh, you put others before yourself, you put others' goals before your own goals, you put others' uh, responsibilities before your own responsibilities. And uh, a, a, re a relatable example would be, I see it a lot in reggae. I see a lot around reggae and uh, quote-unquote celebrities. The people around them, depending on what culture you're from, they'll call them a yes man, they'll call them a groupie, a male groupie. I'm not talking mm -hmm. about female groupies for sexual. I'm talking about like male groupies. And you find that they will do anything for this person because mm -hmm. they view this person as more valuable than their own self. And sometimes too, there's another aspect to it where it's a cop out where the work for you do, the work you do for that person is less than the work you have to do to get yourself in order. So we got to kind of add that to the mix in itself too, you know? Yeah. The concept of people pleasing still is, is that very, I think there, there, there's different lines where you where have a cross, where you cross within people pleasing, because it is necessary to some extent to please healthy, people in, in a, a healthy, healthy way. way I have because, said that earlier. And then there, there's this aspect of one, let's put it at this there's one place, a particular place where you need to please people, but there's still a limit towards it. If you're running a business yeah. and there is some form of um, service that you're, you're giving or some form of um, t um, tangible product that you're selling, you need to ensure that it meets the criteria that people have. So they're pleased. Yeah. And with them being pleased, things will run in the right accord. And also, if you're doing something for somebody, you don't just do it at a, at a minimalist type of extent. You actually go to a full extent to ensure that they're pleased and they're happy. Because once people please and they're happy and you say you're extending yourself to do something, yeah. you want to make sure that the receiving parties happy about that particular task, which is meaning say them get get them get pleased. Or if you are to work in a sense and yeah, you have clients where you have to meet certain criteria. That's that in another aspect is people pleasing. But the people pleasing where now where it become unhealthy is where you do it towards the detriment of one, what you believe in. True. The de two, the detriment of your well being. And I feel like that is where the extent of most people are got these days, like for example, if you think about like social media, that's one of yeah. the places that the, the people pleasing thing. Most people throw themselves on the line yeah. to please people just so them can go viral, just so them can be liked, just so them can people can sympathize with them for whatever thought process they might try to bring across, even if them themselves don't believe it. Yeah, and it's unhealthy because you lose yourself and you, you you're so you're throwing away your core values, you know, Big for time. this uh people pleasing vibe, attention seeking also in a sense, Fox. right? But I wanted to talk about this people pleasing, uh, cause you brought up work and I want to get to the social aspect. We got to touch on this work thing in regards to 
how it's built in to corporate America to be a people pleaser fire. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? And if you're efficient and working a certain way, but you're not a people pleaser, it's almost like you're outcast. <laughs> so it's like you're almost like pushed in a position where you have to be a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of weird because it seems like in upper management, you could tell me, you know, more than me, but like in upper management now, right? I guess, I don't know, but clarify. It seemed like if you're not a people pleaser, you would be in that position more. But it seems like once you're a people pleaser, you kind of limit <laughs> your, I know it's kiss ups there still, right? But it seemed like you need a certain level of uh, individuality and standing up for yourself to be in those positions. But you just correct me. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? You know, so that that relevant though because I remember being in a corporation already and a, 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 a senior director looked at me and told me, say, I'm say, all right, you have the NIE review and all of these different things. And I'm yeah. say, yeah, you get 100% fine. Everything, everything, you exceed all of the capabilities where, where, where we need an employee if you exceed. So I say, well, one of the, when it comes to the negative, what type of cons do you think you think we need for you? Acknowledge so we can develop and him say, you know, look like you struggle. Yeah. You know, look like you struggle and you don't you don't look like you go above and beyond to 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 please people. So yeah. it's it very, very crucial. So me, me ask for them expound on that particular thought. And him say at some given time within a corporation, you need to ensure that you show you go to a oh yeah. I go above and beyond for sure that you can please somebody, yeah. even if you're getting that task accomplished. So you see the the, the mindset the way where, where them put up on an employee, yeah. the interest of them can please people towards the detriment of themselves. So you need to struggle and please people simultaneously in order so you can reach that next level and that next step, which is always gonna take you out of yourself. Yeah, because yeah, you yeah. can't do that on a realistic and a healthy manner where you go struggle and please people. When you're already fulfilling a task, exceeding that limit where them set for you, but them still need you for struggle. So I may find that very, 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 very peculiar and strange. But no way I read about it. It start make way more sense to me because that is how them them fulfill them chain of command True. and them keep them, it, it make for them keep an employee in fear. Now yeah. how do you keep an employee in fear? I always train them that you haven't pleased the the the, the powers that be to this extent. So there's always more work to be done. No, fight. That's a, no, that's a <laughs> structure thing where the military sports culture uh, mm -hmm. is corporate culture. And one thing I want to touch back on fire when you spoke about this pleasing thing, uh, customer service. Yeah. People need better customer service in their friendships and relationships Fox. and family. Right. Yeah. But not the extreme side where you're losing yourself, but they need better customer service. Because what I noticed is that are right, there two things before we get to the uh, service part. On their jobs, when it comes to income, mm -hmm. it's a totally different empathy, compassion, and patience. Yeah. But when it comes to their friendships and family, switch off. They switch off. And I'm telling you, fight, it don't work. So either you need to tone down that energy at the, the job so you have more patience, compassion, empathy, better customer service with your friends and family, or you got to figure out because you're going to flop yourself in life. I've seen it so many times. I've seen people be so patient with customers or their job, but it's a totally different with their family or they have no relationship with their friends and family. You're not and understanding so the customers uh, are human. <laughs> like you know what I'm <laughs> so uh, I just want to put that out for people. If you are one of those, you probably need to tighten up. In regards to service now, right? We have two extremes of polarity. We have the service that's just uh, terrible service in regards to service. We have selfish service where we're servicing mm -hmm. not to help anybody for our own personal thing. We have the service where you just give away everything. I want to talk about a service where people give away everything, right? Uh, if you are in the, uh, or if you are a person that has a spirit of service, um, you need to balance it out. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen this in education. It's actually encouraging to educate. Everything's similar because like the corporate thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's encouraging education. Like you're supposed to give everything to there's nothing left. You're not a good educator unless you give every single uh ounce of energy in your body you and get drained. you get drained it's unhealthy and it's not sustainable so if you are in the spirit of service or are you in the field of service you have to have it where it's uh balanced in the sense where you still can serve yourself right there's another aspect of service i don't like though selfish service service for attention 
you know, um, a lot of things, unfortunately, are done. What I notice is the people who engage in selfish service is done for a very short period of time because once whatever attention they're getting for that particular action dies down, the service dies down. Mm -hmm. It's like the attention and the energy of service are simultaneously uh, mm -hmm. run congruent. So if they're getting a lot of attention, the service is high. Well, once the attention starts to decline, the service starts to decline. You know, and if you're one of those people in that vein too, you need to go look at yourself and understand why do you want to be in the area of service? Because those who've been doing it for a very long time through the ups and downs, whether people don't know, those are the true warriors and the true people who provide service. They're not on social media. They don't get the attention that they should, but there are many people out there and I say salute to them, you know? I say two key things where, where you mentioned one of them already, the, the, the concept of balance multiple time actually. I think the concept of balance is where most people find hard for you yeah. because they, they don't know the definition of or where the line should be drawn when it comes to balance. Balance is, it seems like a, like an easy thing for men. Chan. Okay, you should have balance in this, but where is balance and what is the line that we draw for balance? Because balance means something different to everybody. Farah, right, you see with this balance thing, I think the biggest struggle is, and tell me if this is where you're going, the biggest struggle with the balance is understanding that your outcome won't be the same when you balance it out Yep. and being comfortable with that. Yep. So it's like, say work now, right? You're whatever you are, the people pleasing person, right? And it's leading to a promotion, but it's leading to, you know, more work, uh, kind of health is no, you can't really take care of yourself like you should. Mm -hmm. Now, if we balance that right where you're healthy, but the accolades may decline or you may not be up for a, a, a raise or whatever, that's what we mean by balance. But the problem is people still want the other stuff, mm -hmm. expecting to get the other stuff. And it has to be a sacrifice to balance out this thing. So if you want, if you want, you know, uh, time to work on your mental health, work on your physical health, work on your relationships, you may have a, not always, but you just may have a decline in these other aspects because the energy is put in, in a different area. The question you have to ask yourself is what's more important. Mm -hmm. And what I see happening is that the, Exterior accolades, the money, the praise, the position is more important, but they're lying to themselves. Mm -hmm. And if that's more important to you, just deal with the struggle that comes with it. But don't complain about it because that's what you really want. Yeah, You don't want the actual uh, spiritual, physical part because if you did, you would have to tone that down. But you're not willing to lose this aspect. And that's why I think people lie to themselves, you know? And I think in some cases, I think... It, the situation is for, for a lot of people is not conducive for them for them kind of find that balance at the moment. True, true, true. Because not for everyone. Yeah, realistically, because there's some there, people just on the hunt and the struggle. Yeah. And there might be certain situations where I, I aim where them want to forget to. Yeah. And I, I feel like at this point now, me know say they know it of all person. And me know it very well to another thing. A lot of people are listening to this might know it know it very well where you have to throw yourself on the line. True. That particular thing. And there's a there are certain areas to so I think that's where the conflict come in too, because there are certain areas when you just throw yourself on the line where one, it might come you might have a commit to pleasing someone beyond the means where you don't normally want to do. No. You have to commit to doing us a, a particular serving people beyond a particular means just to get a goal. So I think in the midst of that now for a time. That's for a time. Yeah, for a and time. within the no, but it's it's supposed to be for a time. <laughs> it's supposed to be but for you a see, time. you have you have this thing with human beings. Human beings are creatures of habits. And with human beings being creatures of habits, it there a habit is so easy to adapt towards that you might get into this particular mode where you can't get out of necessarily. Because the moment when you try to put yourself and put timestamps on this, you can't just tomorrow just stop doing it like that. Far out. So it's like I get drawn in. <clears throat> I think. I think the habit can stay the same in regards to the effort that's put in is where the effort's going. Is that mental or if still you, enough? No, I free what I'm saying though, right? So for instance, now the effort's been put in, we're using like jobs as an example, mm. right? The effort's put into your occupation. You can keep the same amount of effort, but you would divert where the energy is going. Mm -hmm. You people know what I'm saying? So yeah. You still have that effort. You still have that commitment, but you would have to put some of that back into yourself. Mm -hmm. But what I was arguing earlier is that I don't think people want to really, people lie about what's important to them. You know, if you go ask a man, what's <laughs> you know, if you go ask a man what's important to him. Yeah. When I was growing up, it was always like, oh, God, family, and whatever. Why are they lying? Yeah, because their life, life don't reflect that. You know what I'm saying? Just be truthful with yourself and say it's money. 
It's yeah. attention. It's my car. It's my clothes. It's, just say that. But people lying to themselves because they've been so trained to say this God thing or they family and all that. And those are the things you give the least attention to. So how can they be the most important thing? You know, you know, you mentioned that, and I think along the lines uh, is uh before me even get to that though, the other thing I want to talk about outside of the balance, the other factor I mentioned is the passion. Yeah. So when it comes to passion, a lot of people um don't have the ultimate passion towards certain things. So I feel like a lot of people cling towards the people pleasing as a means of survival, which is something where we don't talk about often enough because they don't have a passion towards this, we can drive them over the top for excel in a particular era. So I figure it's more or less, it's like people pleasing at some given time is an yeah. easy way out. Because if I can please these individual who might be the gatekeepers for this particular field, field where I try to get into or this particular era where I try to dive into, then if I please them, it could be a way out or a means of survival that could get me up the ladder. But them not realize eh, that's all an illusion. That's Flop brain. City Fire because yeah. I know you saw it in music and you see it in the corporate, so... I remember when I was teaching, right? Yeah, people, for some reason, they was always friends with it. I don't care who the principal was. The school mm-hmm. I was at, they had a lot of fire. For some reason, they was always the closest with the principal. Yeah, that puts you in a bind, though. It's like you're whoring out yourself because now you got to, like... Ah, uh, see there? See there? See there? Do see there? Don't, skip, uh, don't right. skip the statement. Now you're whoring out yourself. No. <laughs> right? Because, and it's a universal concept because you got to get friendly, friendly with this person. But remember, you don't necessarily have the skill because there can be a change in leadership. But if you're tough at what you're doing, if I, you're just tough. Yes, Even right. if you, you know, you're an outside person, but they respect like you're an asset to what's going on here. Mm-hmm. But because they never really, as you said, they're doing this hustle, hustle thing. So it's a mixture of uh, laziness, lack of confidence, and just lack of a skill. You see it in music, fire. Somebody always running behind the artist, yes, and it ma'am. never works. At some time, you have to deliver. Mm-hmm. You see yeah. it, so, you know what I'm saying? You see it so many yeah. times. Somebody running behind the artist, they mm-hmm. up on the artist. In the back of the artist, and I know it ever happened, fire. Because mm-hmm. you never developed, you never developed any body of work or any, and you never created anything that people would like. You can't mm-hmm. stand on your own. And so sustainability. And that's just, that's against manhood, fire. You can't be running behind somebody. You can have someone as a mentor. I want to be clear for people listening. You got someone as a mentor or someone to look up to that you can replicate certain actions. But you can't just be running behind a person, depending on that person for your success and livelihood. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it really comes down to. And whether the industry you go to, you see, I saw it in sports with coaching. Mm-hmm. Some people running around, bouncing around a particular person, laughing at it. That's the thing. If I, you know, I'm a man that just go laugh, laugh with people like that, yeah. but laughing at all the jokes. I hate that, you know, laughing at all the jokes and doing all this. And it's like, eventually you get exposed because the person you're running behind is going to be in a position where they no longer can help you. Because they, they're going to be in a position where they're just in basic survival and they can't help you anymore. I see it all the time. But even if, I think, even if they, they can help you, I think there's one thing where it might be thrown out, where, not even might, yeah. will be thrown out. They say this key word, where, where this respect. Yeah. Respect is, I think, thrown out through the door. Because if a man realizes it, at some given time, a man need inspiration true. or inspiration. And if, if me I seek inspiration, and every time me I need seek inspiration, this person always I feed off of my energy yeah. or I try to kiss up to me and please me then where is the inspiration going to come from? So it's almost like it had dwindled inspiration because, you know, the, when somebody challenge you, challenge you as an individual, that develop your mind, your, your, your cognitive skills start increase. And the more, the more you get challenged, not necessarily a person who continuously does a challenge or oppose what you say. Hold accountable fire and just kind of... Not, 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 not necessarily just hold you accountable for if you do wrong, you know. Not no, about. but well, accountable is not the problem. But term. test you from have. ensure you can, your skills yeah, can develop. You. And just tell yeah. you, say, yo, things could be better. It's not on a level, you know. My wife yeah. do that, fire. My wife quickly tell me things trash, yo. Yeah. You Keep know? on and make yeah. it that develop so it like, gets stronger, you know. Because you can't just say every time this is the dopest thing ever because it's not yeah. dope and it could be better. That make you become mediocre. But so you, the respect gone through the door. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. But um, I don't know if I, I don't know if the reasoning was jumping around in that could reason. But the um, I just want to encourage people, man, that you have to find the balance in both uh, people pleasing and service. And with the service thing, you got to do with a clean heart. It's too much organizations out here, too much people claim that they're doing good. Or trying to serve, and they're not serving; they serve themselves, and they all flop out. Yeah, the life serving them on self interest. Lifespan is so short, and they don't have to say anything because they all get exposed. Because when that yeah. thing don't work, they off to the next thing. There's no yeah. commitment. Yep. You know what I'm saying? 
That is a that's key. the next reason we need to do a commitment because like we live in a commitment less if that's even a word society. Yeah. If you break down all aspects of society, there's no commitment, yeah. Especially with relationships, yeah. Yeah. Well, I would not talk about just just intimate relationship. It's more like every, every relationships, form of relationship. Relationships with yourself, I have people now you committed to themselves. themselves yeah. yeah. Fucks. You know? So we probably, need, we probably need to do a reason not commitment the same way. Mm, yes, I. <laughs>